So good morning, everyone. I am so delighted to see so many faces here. I'm, there's a lot of uh, friends and colleagues in the room, and we've worked together on a lot of uh, interesting and tough issues over the last few decades. And so um, I'm just absolutely delighted to see everybody. Um, I, like Peter, I want to really thank some people. You know, we had an organizing committee that worked on developing this program over the last five months, and you can see the names up here, and so I won't read them all in the, uh, because of time, but uh, it's a fantastic group. And in addition, I think that for all of you that have worked on meetings and activities like this, you always know that there is the engine which really drives everything. And so the engine is Sessi, and it's Hayano, and it is An. And they are the engine and the transmission for making things go forward. And so I want to, again, thank them for really uh, shepherding us through. Um, so in the next... Uh, Two days, as Peter indicated, we're going to do a deep dive on uh, preparedness-related issues. And the goal is rather simple, which is really to identify what we should have learned and acted upon. However, actually doing that kind of goal turns out to be remarkably difficult. It is uh, an issue for which there have been any number of meetings, and I have been involved in a fair number of these meetings over my career. Uh, you know, there have been uh, many, many meetings related to preparedness, you know, for example, in the country. So, you know, Bruce, Bruce Jellin is sitting in the audience, and so Bruce was deeply involved with uh, national pandemic preparedness, and uh, when I was at CDC, was involved with the, that process, and in going to WHO, involved with a lot of meetings with many different countries, many different agencies, and so on over uh, a number of years. I've been involved in a number of uh, after-event meetings, uh, some with some of you in the room, and so hot washes from uh, different organizations and institutions about what exactly happened and what did we learn and, and, and how painful was it. Um, some of these meetings have been focused on technical issues. So how do we get ready for uh, making sure we have vaccines? Or how do we get uh, surveillance implemented? How do we know what's going on? How do we uh, know where we are? And so the dis uh, discussions on uh, whether we should have pandemic phases or not. So there have been a lot of issues like that. And then there have been governance and coordination related issues. And so many of these have revolved around the implementation of the international health regulations. And then uh, the IHR discussions have also deeply involved how do we build capacity? How do we build systems in countries? So these issues are not particularly new, um, but they take different twists and turns over time. And at the global level, there have been, again, a number of different inquiries and processes, again, to try to understand what has happened, where should we go, what should we learn. And so uh, I think Harvey is in here. I know he's... So the, uh, the 2009 or 2010 review of the 2009 pandemic, uh, you know, looking at it through an IHR lens, uh, the PIP negotiations themselves, which we're going to hear a little bit about and discuss later this morning, in and of itself, again, was another process to try to get at some of the issues related to being better prepared for pandemics. Uh, I've sat through some uh, parliamentary <laughs> hearings in Europe, which were quite painful after the H1N1 pandemic, a little bit excoriating, but nonetheless the, the real world in terms of assessing. And then, of course, there were the many Ebola-related uh, committees and so on. And so. There have been a lot of different processes which have tried to get at these issues. And one observation is that depending on where you sit, if you sit in a local community, if you sit with a national group, if you sit with a global group, the perspectives change, the language change, changes, and you get a somewhat different idea of what's going on there. And in the end, you realize you need somehow to bring that all together. Um, but Frequently, that's difficult because we don't have enough time. Uh, frequently, that's difficult because there's a kind of disconnect between different levels operating in the world. And it is simply true that if you are sitting in West Africa and then you think about discussions taking place in New York or Geneva, you would think these are so far apart. 
it's hard to know how they're connected and so on. But that is the, the practicalities. So over the next, uh, next day and a half, we're going to try to get into some of these issues, but I think really to try to emphasize some of those aspects which are often missed, a little bit glossed over sometimes, but which are absolutely essential. I think that you're going to see that when we get into the discussion on vaccines. There are, of course, issues about product, and there are, of course, issues about numbers, but there are other issues about how do you actually get from the idea of having a pandemic vaccine to getting people who are actually immunized. And there are many, many different issues which come up related to that. And we'll explore some of those issues. So we're going to start out with two um, overview discussions uh, or overviews. One is going to be provided by Rick Bright. Second one's going to be provided by Arnold Monto. Um, and I'm going to introduce Rick in a moment, but I think um, if you look ahead to the agenda and you see, well, how's the rest of the meeting constructed, just to give you a bit of an idea how to maybe approach this, um, we will have a, a discussion or we will have a panel on local and national capacities, and that's because it is the single absolute issue. It really, and I'll be very blunt, it really doesn't matter what happens at the global level if we don't have it ready at the local level, and that is simply the biggest truth of all of these preparedness meetings. The second uh, panel that we'll have a discussion on is going to be about vaccines, but again, trying to get at some of the um, issues, and I, I often think of vaccination and vaccines as kind of an iceberg. You see an iceberg for different issues and so on. But what we often don't talk about related to vaccines are liability issues, operational issues, cold chain issues, which get discussed by some people but are often missed. Um, these are some of the, the bread and butter issues. Working at the global level, what you begin to understand is that issues of equity and fairness are not talk. They are not they are not simply concepts. They are as practical and as real and as concrete as any other issue out there, uh, such as technical innovation and so on. And so this is, uh, this is why we're highlighting the PIP framework, because it is one of the processes which is directly tried to address this. But finally, when we go over tomorrow, we are going to be talking about how do we make the business case for sustained support. If you sit back and think about what have we learned from 1918 onwards, one of the biggest lessons is that we are on a roller coaster. We have explosions of attention, we have anxiety, we have alarm, and then we have disappearance. And it is a kind of roller coaster. And so uh, a little bit of a discussion on how do we sort of get off that roller coaster so they have something more sustainable. And then finally, of course, we're going to close by looking ahead to the future. And we have some fantastic people to give us some thoughts about how to look ahead to things. So with that, let me move on to introducing Rick. So Rick is uh, the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Preparedness and Response, and he is also the Director of BARDA, which is the Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority. And in that capacity, he oversees the uh, advanced development and procurement of medical countermeasures against uh, a number of different threats, uh, including chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear threats, and pandemic influenza and emerging infectious diseases. Uh, Rick began his career at CDC, and he is uh, an advisor to the WHO as well as USDOD and a number of agents, other agencies. So Rick, can I turn to you? 